morning, church. Hasn't God been good? We're all breathing. We woke up this morning. We have so much to be thankful for. I see the Wilsons at the back. Welcome. We just want to talk to Jesus this morning about all he has done. We want to thank him. So if you have something special to be thankful for, I want you to walk up to the front as we just tell Jesus how good he is. If you have something that you want to ask him for, come forward as we seek the Lord in prayer. Sweet Take our children. 
children, our spouse, bless our families. And Lord, when you shall come, we really, really do want to go home with you. So hurry up, I pray. For Jesus' sake, amen.
blessings and honor and glory all and all belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bring me all the times into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now. Here with me. Says the Lord of hosts that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there may not be room to receive as God has. Heavenly Father, we thank you. And again, we thank you. Please accept these gifts as tokens of our appreciation for all you have done for us. May these funds go out into this world to prepare this place for your return. In Jesus' holy and almighty and creative and redemptive name we pray. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
So when God says, remember, he must have known during the last days before his return, people might be tempted to forget. I think maybe that might be one of the reasons why he said, remember. Because he knew down to the ages, as he got closer to his soon return, people would be tempted to forget. Forget about the Sabbath. And forget about Lot's wife. Forget about it. To remember means to keep it in mind. Don't forget it. Don't let it slip. Now, how many have trouble remembering stuff? Let me see. You got a great hand. I know, yeah, I know a lot of you like it. You know, my wife is beginning to tell me, you need to write stuff down. You know, you get a certain age, you need to write stuff down. Some people are young and they need to write stuff down. Amen? So remember to keep things in mind. Don't forget it. Don't let it slip. How good are you at following instructions? Men and women, how good are you at following instructions? Hmm. To be a good follower of instruction, you must be a patient listener. What did I say? What kind of listener? Patient. A patient listener. Hmm. Remember Lot's wife. When the wickedness of Sodom had passed the limits of divine forbearance. You know, God has a limit. Listen to me. God has a limit on how much he is going to take. He has a limit. He has a limit, Brinko. I'm the oldest of eight, and we're in the house playing, jumping all around. My father worked on one job for 40 years at night. When they're making all kinds of noise, he's trying to sleep. He walks to the door and he says, listen to me. I don't have to come back to this door again. You know? <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to come back to this door again. He was giving us what? Some grace, yeah. right? Yes. God has grace, but there is a limit. God has a limit on what's going to happen here in a little while. So we have to be mindful of that. So what about, what is it about... <laughs> Remember Lot's wife. What, what's about that? Well, <laughs> she looked back. I'm sorry. She looked back when they had been instructed not to turn. And she became a pillow of salt. Remember? Instructed, don't look back. Keep going. She looked back. One thing is for sure. She was a blessed sister, her and her husband. I'm going to say that again. There's one thing that's for sure. She was a blessed sister, her and her husband. All right, let me show you how. They were blessed on the scale of Uncle Abraham. So many blessings, like the sands of the sea. The blessing of God was so great on their lives until they had to separate. You know the story, right? Lot, workers, and Abraham workers began to fight because there wasn't enough pasture land for them. They were just blessed. Sister Lot and her husband, they were blessed. So, they were blessed and they had so much stuff. So many herds of animals, sheep, goats, and cattle. They were blessed. Pardon me. So they moved, left the mountain, leaving Abraham, and they moved to the plain outside of Sodom. So blessed, they decided they had to move. So they left. Isn't it amazing how God, he's always revolving around the mountain? Have you noticed that in the Bible, God always, he called the children of Israel out of Egypt to meet him at the mountain, right? And as a matter of fact, when he came down upon the mountain, the mountain began to shake and to quake. It came on fire. People became fearful. God always meets you at a higher level than where you are. Somebody say amen. He meets you at the highest level. Okay, so they moved to Sodom. This is uh, this is like the this is like the country boy moving to the city. This is like the good old boy moving to the city. And I can imagine when they got there, because Sodom was beautiful. It was palatial. It was fantastic. Sodom, it wasn't a typical city. 
As a matter of fact, if you take Patriots and Prophets, it says, the fairest among the cities of the Jordan Valley was Sodom, as the garden of the Lord. They're describing it as being like the garden of Eden, with palm trees and grapevines. I mean, the weather was ideal, commercial. There were wealthy people in Sodom. That's what they did. They flourished. So I'm not too upset sometimes when I think about Sister Lot. Kind of tough coming from the mountains and getting close to a big, beautiful metropolis soaring. She begins to wait for a little bit. Remember Lot's wife. She was wealthy. She was fertile. We know she had at least four daughters. We know that, right? She had at least four daughters. She had a relationship with God. She's our example of how a person can be on the brink of going into the kingdom, but don't make it. Think about that. Remember Lot's wife. She was on the brink of going into the kingdom, but she didn't make it. In other words, if she was living here right now, today, she would be just as some of us are, on the brink of going in, but she didn't make it. Jesus says, remember, remember Lot's wife, almost there. She shows us how you can have a misdirect understanding of what it means to love your children. She shows us, Sister Lot shows us that you can have a misdirected understanding of how to love your children. When you, listen to me, when you begin to put your children above God, it's not really love. Work with me, Holy Ghost. Come on. When you begin to put your children 